Dr. Stone is a 10 billion percent must watch new anime, new show on anime. It's a really, really good anime. So here, hello everyone, Modern Dream. Tell me like a quick, it's like a quick full anime review. It's kind of weird, but I just finished watching Dr. Stone after 24, the final episode of this season, right? And what's the twist announced and so on. So if you haven't seen Dr. Stone yet, it's a video for you. So I absolutely recommend it. I think it's the best new show in a while. I'm not just talking about this year, but actually probably the latest few years. I think probably that is the second best shonen uh, in a while. So it's it's been some really good shonen this year, right? And also all this new shonen are not as good, but still entertaining. But the story is very very good. So what's about them? As you probably heard, the premise right is that it's person everyone gets petrified or stoned up, right? And way then in the future, just three thousand years to be exact, the world has been destroyed or more overgrown, I guess. And he awakens right Senku, the main character, and he starts trying to rebuild the society. Uh, that's kind of the premise, I would say. And it has the Isekai feel to it, I suppose, people compared to that. And I think that's fast to compare it to. It kind of is like a main character right, from our time, our world, getting to a new world, like a petrified world, a stone age world. So it definitely has a kind of Isekai feel to it uh, for that man. I think that's fair to say. But there really is good strength then, of the stone. There's several good strength, and the comment is good and so on. But it's actually like a very interesting educational shonen anime. It's not really about the battles because there basically are no battles. So it's not that typical, you know, shonen anime. There's no One Piece, there's no My Academia and so on. It's not really that in the anime. It's much more like they have to fight and conquer different elements of the planet, right? Like acid or poison or something in the, in, the, in nature. How they can utilize that for building new inventions and so on. It's a very interesting anime. But I also think one thing. That does very very well, which I feel other educational anime or education fails on. So actually, it's a pretty good show for your kids in that way. Yeah, because I'll say it here briefly. Uh, While I work mainly as an engineer or something so on, so besides, I can't. I made my bias at that stone. I'm also working as a teacher, lecturers, well, a bit, and currently I'm doing lectures once a week. Uh, on engineering stuff, so maybe it's just, maybe I'm very biased, but I do really like how it does that story. I really like it. So from an education standpoint, it's really good. So for example, here's a scene. Of course, it doesn't play. There we go. For my face there, when you land like just yeah, and it's like, <laughs> and it shocks him, right? And it's a lot like this in the stone where they invent something new and then they very very graphically show it. They're like yeah, <laughs> it can give you shocks, <laughs> yeah. And then, I think that is really well done in this anime where stuff, to let's be honest here, is pretty mundane to, to, to even to person like me that really likes stuff and I build my own stuff and so on. Uh, even to person like me, oh, someone is inventing like mud, uh, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, oh yeah, clay, yeah, 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 that's fun. Like, it shouldn't be that amazing. Uh, but in this anime, it's always like, oh my god, look at this thing! And we see, so talk with the Butchie, the artist, and the general animation studio, it really looks amazing. Yeah, they're really inventing stuff, and it's really like, you know, it's really exploding, right? And their eyes are. So I think that's one thing that I feel this anime does so well because it makes educational stuff, like mainly STEM stuff, then, right? And the scientific stuff, physics, and so on. And I personally love those subjects, and I've studied them at university, but. <laughs> Let's be let's be fair here. Most people don't write. And even for me, I think some part it's pretty boring of those stuff. Not many parts though, because I really like physics chemistry. But still though, there are some parts every now and then it's like, oh, why well, to learn this thing? But but this anime, everything is like, whoa, oh, it's exploding! Oh shit, it's happening! And um, I think it's really well done in that sense. And I wish you know, I wish that school system and so on, that like high school and so on was like this for the children mainly. Where you go in there and the teacher will be like, yeah, today I teach you about water, H2O. If you do this thing, it explodes! <laughs> like, yeah, like, that would be great, yeah. And if you do this thing, it burns! Yeah, like, that would be amazing. That's kind of how the stone is. So everything is very, very shown then in that way. Everything is very specialized. Everything is very, you know, <gasps> um, it's not like that, right? So why don't have any battles, per se? They have a few battles in the anime, not spoiling here, but it's very few battles. Uh, which I guess is spoiled in a sense, but they have a bet every now and then. They still feel like watching a battle anime, so to speak, because they keep having these like you know amazing animated like wow shit oh, but, oh yeah. So that thing is really well done. I think that's one of the best selling points of the anime uh, for sure, for sure in my opinion, and it also makes it a really good anime from an kind of educational standpoint. Again, I've mentioned it a few times now, but I think it's 
arguably one of the best animation stuff I've seen in my life. Or not animation, sorry, educational stuff I've seen in my life. It's from general stuff. There are some other examples I think is even better if you're going to go in very much detail. For example, it's a history writer that writes like kind of uh, how I present it. It's a history writer and he writes like not non-fictional, kind of half non-fictional uh, stories about usually like a teenager, young boy or young girl that somehow gets like a job at this person's office, right, with like, the famous king or something, and they kind of observe the kind of reflection of what's happening in historical events. So you see kind of tension, and you learn about history. That's like a very good way to do it. So you have history teaching, you learn about the stuff from like the view of this random kid and so on, uh, for example. So they're all entertaining. So there's also more example I would say, which is more focused on being educational. That might be better, but man, this might be the best for science stuff, for like STEM stuff. Mm. I mean, sure, it's the focus on explaining everything in detail, but man, you're still getting a good vibe of it, and it, it is really well done in that sense. So I think it's very, very impressive to Stone. Um, some more stuff then that I, I was kind at first, I was gonna show a photo of this thing, but I actually changed my mind now. So we have, I won't change anything here now because it will be a big spoiler. But I think we're gonna mention it generally here, which is past me at Stone, and why I like it so much too, and why it's very emotional, is that it actually has. And the word actually feels weird because, in the, okay, so very, very minor spoiler. In the beginning, thank you. He's kind of Dr. Einstein, right? He's kind of like this logical guy. We do this thing, this thing. He's very quirky. He's very fun. I like him, yeah. But there's so much emotions, though. He left, you know, <laughs> yeah, smug. <laughs> it's, kind of, yeah, it's kind of like that. But gradually in the anime, especially now in the latest um, Tennis episodes, it actually gets quite emotional. And there's some good like backstories, some good um, uh, emotional events that I can't really explain because then it would be a big spoiler. But you probably are gonna figure it out when you get closer to what happened. But it's, uh, I think that's for me was the biggest, uh, how say it, the biggest surprise, the biggest, uh, which I did think, yeah, like whoa, it's actually really sad now. Yeah, so that that uh, it's not a good starting point in my opinion because uh, it felt like it's a you know not say it was a bad anime for astronaut, not a bad anime for that. But to also have that, to also have this emotional yearn, it's very hard, I'm sorry if it's very, very flimsy now, but it's very hard to give examples about these things, because the examples will absolutely spoil <laughs> So it's very, very hard to explain what I mean here, but if you've seen the anime, you probably know what I'm talking about here, yeah. But it's, uh, I think it was very surprising how it actually got like a very emotional, like the ending was very emotional as well and so on. And uh, that's also, I think, again, I think that, the anime actually has for kind of good strength there. I think it's for this season or this year of shonen anime, so new shonen anime, yeah, probably the most emotional shonen anime actually of all of the new ones, of the new ones. Uh, actually by far I would say of the new ones because all the ones are not very emotional. Promise Neverland, a bit Fire Force, zero emotional, <laughs> zero emotional whatsoever. <laughs> There's no emotional anime whatsoever. It's just like fighting all the time, yeah. Um, but. Um, Generally, another thing that I really like with Senku, which I can't believe I mentioned yet, but it is like a personal thing for me, but I really love this thing, is he's the smartest main character ever too. This is Shona. He's the smartest main character ever. I really love that. And what I mean with that isn't that he is this like brainy, you know, he's the leader of these people and they have like this, you know, a lot of people and it's like, oh yeah, control and the society and he can build stuff and I'm not talking about that. Even that's true as well. He's clearly like a genius, mathematical, whatever genius, right? Of course, that's true, and that's the, his power, right? He's like super powerful, intelligent. But what really makes Senku, um, and I think anime is much better doing this generally, though, than obviously Hollywood and Western stuff, like in, from the US particularly. But Senku is really smart in everything. And that to me makes sense, that to me is realistic. And it's just really good because normally what you have right is something I think the best example I have is Dr. Reed's in Kingdom Minds. He's the most ridiculous character ever, but that, that kind of character is like, oh, I can calculate exactly how many people live in the city based on the water flow in a river. It's like, yeah, there is an episode where he flies and it's like, how many people live in mm -hmm, Chicago? It's like, well, Chicago, yeah, we are. This, this, that's much water. It's going to live this is many million. Like, wow, it's right. Like, that's ridiculous. Who would know that? It's ridiculous. Like, no one. We're able to, he's not even doing the math, it's like approximating and assuming stuff based on the water flow. And also that makes no sense because even if you have the water flow and you can say that, well, rivers and so on, you have cities for trade and so on, 
you could also be other effects like like weather effects, uh, different trading agreements, and so on, uh, war, and so on. So it's obviously it's more factors. It's one factor will determine pollution. So first and foremost, that's complete bullshit, right? You can't actually do math like that because that's not how you could. You wouldn't be able to trust me. I am like a math man. I'm a mathematic guy. You can do that. I if I can do it, he can do it. No, but that's making sense. So he does that stuff. But anyway, he can do stuff given the right to Hindu stuff. The possible he can do it, and on the same time, he can't boil an egg, right? Like, that's the typical character we find in Western media, I think, particularly, particularly in um, TV shows like House and so on. Yeah, the, 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 this genius is incredible at one thing, and then incredible bad at everything else, right? To have some kind of like redeeming qualities or something, yeah, and it absolutely makes no sense. In reality, it's much more like, well, if you're a genius at feed A. You're also probably really good at feed B because you're clearly smarter than other people. Like that's how it is in reality. If you're a smart person, you're also pretty good at other stuff too. Very few people are only smart in one thing, and then they aren't smart and they aren't talented. And then they're just like hard working in that field, which can be okay. But obviously, a lot of people might have like one very particular skill, but then that skill comes from you know not having talent, but actually just having like, you know experience in it. And it's a different thing. Right? Talent means you actually you can learn it immediately. Or at least faster than people, right? So, and thank you then, of course, has incredible talent and genius level of right? intelligence, not, you know, experience. He has the genius of learning, right? Not actually of that, that thing, yeah. So, he should be much smarter and learning faster. And he is! And that is so great. He's not falling into a typical trope of having useless other abilities or like social abilities or whatever. Also, classic thing, right? That the genius character can't have social skills. Very classic, even though it also makes no sense in reality. I still used to better at that. Uh, I'll say one thing though, in my own life experience, people that are very, very smart, so to speak, let's call them smart for, um, usually then they don't care about social aspects because in, that, in, in their world it has very little value. So they have the skills, but they don't care to use them because they're like, screw it, I don't care about that stuff, I don't care about the deal, yeah. And I can, yeah, and that, that makes sense though. And if you have a character that's like that, like a small character that doesn't want to cooperate, so to speak, right? Oh, okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. But usually, no. Usually, they're reading like they're complete morons, right? They have no understanding of what's happening around them. Complete social inept, right? And that doesn't make any sense at all. For a second. But Senku then again is Senku is like genius at everything, and I really love that. He's smart, he's cunning, he's intelligent in all the regards, right? So he can both manipulate. And you know, befriend, but also I say manipulate. I think before, yeah. he can manipulate his nakamas to do his bidding. And I think the word is really manipulating. He's like, oh, if you have, I will give you some ramen. You want some ramen? You want, yeah, oh, you can do this thing for me. You want to spin this thing? I will give you a banana. He's kind of like that. Yeah, he bribes them and so on and motivates them and tricks them to do his bidding. So he's a little, like, a little of a bad guy, you know, in that sense, but he's doing a pretty good thing, right? Um, but that is great. That is great. That awesome, he does that stuff, and uh, on the same time, you know, the shows that he's like an you know, empathic person and that person's one, right? Uh, so that's a cunning manipulative, but on the same time, he's also a good strategist, he can determine the bad guy's motive and so on, right? So, all of that is really good to say, he's a master of everything, and even if that sounds it should be boring, he does it in a good way, he's a great character, and uh, it just makes sense, though, it just makes sense that he can both build this thing. And do this thing, and do this thing, and this thing, and then this thing. And yes, he's clearly overpowered intelligence, like of course he is. Clearly overpowered, like completely godlike intelligence. But at least he's written as a great character. And if she with him, he's really enjoyable. And also, he does it from the pragmatic, as I mentioned, he can do social skills, but sometimes he doesn't because he doesn't care about it. So when the best girl, Quaku, is like, oh, maybe I like you, thank you, he's like, oh, you're not with me. I, I don't need your girlfriend, yeah. <laughs> He's like, nope, I don't need your girlfriend. It's like that, that he, he knows, he understands, you know. Oh, she's saying one thing. Hmm, that's probably a romance hint, right? So I think that thing is great because there have been too many shonen animes, like the shonen animes, where the main character instead is a complete moron, right? So yeah, and they can't understand any, you know, social cues at all, right? We, of course, think is, is much more like. He can understand cues very, very well, <laughs> almost too well, right? So I think that's that's really good. Uh, but he actually understands that. Oh, I see. This guy's in love with that girl. 
I can use that. Yeah, like th that is more central, right? And I think that that fresh of breath air in short and anime in general to finally have like an intelligent main character, just like intelligent stuff, and can understand not only from like a fighting standpoint. This character is strong in A. He's like, hmm, this character is strong in this thing. I see, and that character likes the character. How can I utilize the romantic, you know, so on? Like that kind of character. That's the Senku. That's like the better the only shonen character ever that's done that. So that is very, very fresh and very enjoyable. Last thing I want to talk about the bad guy. I forgot about him. He was really much in the anime. <laughs> but that is one thing I want to say. I want to spoil it. It's kind of hard to go into the bad guy, but I feel the bad characters. But I do feel that I talked to some people a few, like last month. Uh, like last Friday, party. so in that party, for example, uh, talking to some other nerds, right? And some of them were like, oh, I, don't, I don't really watch Stone because I liked it in the beginning, it's like science, and then it's like bad guys, and then they kind of like, I don't want to see it anymore. And I would say this thing, that's spoiling it too much, then, I don't, don't, no details, but I feel that that to me is an unwarranted fear of it because if you liked the Stone for the science stuff, for the comedy, for the best girls, and so on, right? Then you're gonna like it even more later on because there's less and less battles. I didn't spoil my spoiler, yeah, but there's less and less conflict, more and more, I would say, uh, invention stuff and so on. So if you like that, if you like seeing like, you know, Kuaku being lovable and so on, this is more of that, yeah. So that is awesome. Uh, I will say that thing though, as I suppose though, as a last thing, uh, and I think that's probably the, how I say it, arguably though, the weakest thing of the anime is though. Potentially, I suppose, potentially, there is few battles, <laughs> I guess. But for most people I talk about, they actually they actually are afraid to get into it, and then they're like, I don't know, they're kind of yelling this bad guy, and it's drama, and uh, that actually does reduce. So, but I, I but I can see people coming from the typical Dragon Ball kind of fandom. If I see fighting and battles, it's probably not anime for you then, if you only want to see that. But I, in my opinion, I think very few people. Or you just want to see people, f yeah, I think there's very few people that are like that. People like different kind of genres, right? And I think if you like the show and anime generally, if you like One Piece, if you like Dragon Ball, you all like this anime. It's more comedy, I suppose, and more science educational, but it's really funny. So even if you don't get that, I think that kind of all the time, you, you do get the comedy definitely. And it's kind of the same similar slapstick comedy, especially to One Piece. So if you like that from the comedy aspect, and those kind of moments, you're definitely gonna enjoy the anime. I think in general, the anime is very, very entertaining. It's very, very you know, high entertaining stuff all the time, even if there are less battles going forward. That being said, though, it kind of comes back in, in the end to more battles. So you know, there are some times, and as a final note, I think that's a good part of the anime too. Though there is this tension. Now some people want to just be again uh, science stuff, education stuff. But I think that there has to be a little bit like, you know, like a, a carrot, right? For the main character to be like, well, I have to invent the gun because I have enemies. So, you know, yeah, I, I think that's good. There is this like main plot, a main arcing plot, right? It's kind of like similar to an open world uh, game, I'll say like, you know, Better Wild, something like that, right? Where you have this like main goal. Okay, go and defeat Kilometer Ganon over here somewhere. Okay. and. That's the main goal. And they could run around and do all the other stuff, but you still have main goal over there. So you have some kind of main goal you have to defeat eventually. And but before you get up there, get the horse, get the bow, get some more arrow, you know, get the, you know, get the special cloak thing, get this thing, get this thing, yeah. So if you want to, or defeat the bad guy, yeah. So it's kind of like that, right? But the stone has like a bad guy, he's over here somewhere outside the map, uh, and then you have all the other stuff around it. And then sometimes he does something bad, so you have to kind of interact with the bad guy. That's kind of how it is. I think that's great because then you get this comedy, you get the special stuff, and you're getting that. There still is a longer tension, right? There's something that you have to be afraid of. Because if he wasn't there, it was just him rebuilding the society from, you know, civil time with no war, I think it would be a little boring because there would never be any moment where the main kids like, I have to do this now. There would never be any intention of, if we can't do it in 10 days, we're dying, you know? Even though obviously they, they, they are gonna be do it, or else they will die. So <laughs> obviously they will succeed, as in other storyline ever. The good guys are of course winning. <laughs> so you know, spoilers because yeah, as with every other show ever, the good guys are winning. So you know, um, but still though, without that feeling of attention, uh, it will be drawing a little slower, right? So uh, I think it's like a perfect, in my opinion, it's a very good balance, almost a perfect balance there. 
where the bad guy is is bad enough and he's you know frequent enough to be a threat but not more than that so it doesn't take too much from the from from the aspect of the show what it actually is so in the in the end i think it's a great great show i really enjoyed it one of my absolute favorite animes this year so i have to give you the recommendation and yeah see you guys with the manga stuff the manga stuff will be awesome i'm going to read the manga now because i need to read the manga must 10 million percent must to read the manga yes so anyways have a great guy and i'll see you with some more anime manga tonight subscribe press the like button